Um, reels are pretty standard. Um, rods. This rod right here, I probably do 90% of my fishing with this rod right here. This eight foot pro angler uh, with the cork. If y'all hadn't used these rods yet, Man, they're, they're, they're awesome rods. Uh, b and the Sam Heaton Signature Series is a good rod. Wally Marshall Signature Series is a good rod. Somewhere in the seven, eight, nine foot range is usually the best. If you're new to this, and especially if you're coming from the bass fishing world, uh, you know, I, I, I bass fish forever with that five and a half foot pistol grip. You know, this, this thing feels like it's, you know, like I'm holding a telephone pole. Well, that, you get past that, but you kind of, sometimes you may need to work up to that. I know my wife, um, she's graduating this year, she doesn't know that yet, uh, uh, up, to a, up to an eight foot rod, or nine foot rod. Most of the time, last year she spent, she fished with a, uh, with a six and a half foot rod. She was more comfortable with, it was shorter, she felt like she could control it better, she could control the fish better. If, if that's what you like, use it. The only thing that you're giving up by by shortening your rod is just your ability to reach different places. Okay, you may have to get that boat up a little bit closer. You may not be able to reach as many different spots without having to move. Other than that, a good rod's a good rod. Uh, light action, good tip, graphite. It doesn't have to be. Again, I mean this rod's thirty-eight dollars, thirty-six dollars, something like that. Two hundred dollar rod is a waste on for crappie fishing. Um, but any kind of rod that you feel comfortable with. Um, if you start, if you don't like the long rods, if you're not comfortable with them, go with six and a half, seven footer. Uh, you may just stay with that forever. You may get to the point where you, uh, um, where you feel more comfortable with the longer rods, and you can start using those. One of the best ways to get more comfortable with a longer rod um, is to do a little spider rigging with ten foot uh, or longer rods. This, I know Paul and Jerry use ten foot rods. Uh, for all of their spider rigging. Uh, this is a 12 foot. I use I, I, do, I use 12 foot um, uh, Wally Marshall Mighty Lights for, for, for most of my spider rigging. Um, the main reason is I, you know five, six, seven years ago however long it was that's the rod that I thought I wanted to use. Uh, I wanted a 12 foot you know. I couldn't decide you know you read the copy magazines those guys that spider rig you know they'll use 10 foot to 18 foot, 20 foot rods. I figured a 12 foot was a pretty good balance. I kind of got used to it, and I just, I just stuck with it. Um, but uh, if you ever want, if you ever want a, uh, to feel like an 8 foot rod is just, is just a light little short stick in your hand, will fish with a 10 or 12 foot for a while, and you can go back to those 8 foots pretty easy. Um, dock shooting. That's my, like I said. That's my dock shooting rod. Anywhere from four and a half to five and a half. Is usually what I use uh, for dock shooting. This, this is a this is a Walmart special. Uh, Abu Garcia Connellan. I talked about it last year when I did that dock shooting seminar. That's my favorite rod for dock shooting. Uh, that's something that you really need to get a feel for. Find the rod that you that you're used to and try to stick with that rod um, because you know almost every brand of rod that you have out there has. Uh, a different amount of flex to it and a different type of flex. The tip may flex a little different. And the best way to get, develop cons some consistency in shooting docks or pitching anything is to use the same kind of rod. So every time I go into a Walmart and if they've got a couple of these I buy them and set them in the corner of the garage because I break about two or three of these a year reaching down under a dock and letting fly and that tip flips up and hits the dock and snaps the end of it off or something. So, uh, And these are, you know, $25, $30. I mean, they're they're cheap they're cheap rods. Again, you don't you don't need you don't need an expensive rod to do this kind of stuff. Um, it's all what you're comfortable with. Okay, um, line. The perfect line for fishing for crappie, I don't think has been invented yet, and I don't know that it ever will be. I I mean, and I've used I've used everything under the sun. I've used Braid, I've used Wally Marshall's line, I use Vicious now, I've used uh, Strand, uh, Trilene, I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a tackle junkie, you know, I gotta buy all that stuff and try it out. So, um, there's, 
basically three kinds of line, three styles of line that I use. And one of them, and the most common, is monofilament. This is vicious line, six pound vicious, uh, six pound uh, um, uh, Wally Marshall works. Um, but I think, I think a, a six pound monofil monofilament high vis is, uh, is, is, is my favorite line. I, I'm a line watcher. And my eyes aren't that good. I can't see the clear blue as well. Now, you notice on this rod over here, the one that I fish with, uh, with uh, fish standing timber and brush piles, that's clear blue uh, vicious. And I, if I'm gonna, if if I'm fishing brush piles or I'm fishing straight up and down here, I can see this blue. I don't have a problem with that. And nine, I, and this is just my opinion. 95% of the time, I don't think the line makes a bit of difference in the world as far as visibility to the crappie. Sometimes I just kind of get that feeling, though, um, that, that I've, got, I've got high vis on, I've got the clear blue, or I've got the braid. And there's sometimes I just think that, that, uh, that the line color or the line size hurts me. Uh, and, I've, and I've heard the stories like y'all have. Where's, where's Jason at? Yeah, Jason was talking about uh, fishing with Chuck over on Palestine here a few weeks ago. He had uh, 10 pound high vis, Chuck had 6 pound, uh, doing the exact same thing side by side on the, on, the same br uh, on the same bridge piling, and Chuck was just slaying him. Now Chuck's good, but he ain't that good. So, I mean, everything else was the same. The only difference was the line size. Sometimes it makes a difference. Sometimes I think line size affects the action of the jig, so that has a little bit to do with it. But a lot of times I think they can just see the line. Most of the time I don't think it matters. 95% of the time I don't think it matters. But I, and I'm still not 100% sold. I may be, I fished with braid on this, on, on, on this rod that I do most of my fishing with. I fished with uh, high-vis gold braid for the longest time because I liked it best. I've just recently switched over uh, to this 10 pound um, high vis blue because there was some times when I could fish them side by side that I think uh, it hurt me a little bit. If the water's muddy or anything like that, I don't ever think of thinking about it. Yes, sir? That's the third kind. And I use fluorocarbon in one scenario. And I think, I think it has a place, and I know guys use it in a, in a wide variety. Uh, of situations, but I use fluorocarbon in one scenario, and I use that fluorocarbon on my leaders. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on what all this crap is here in a little bit. But um, this is eight pound um, vanish, Berkeley vanish fluorocarbon. Um, I like the I like fluorocarbon on leaders for two reasons. One is it's clear, and I think that's the less important reason. Uh, the second reason I like it is because it's more abrasion resistant than a filament. Um, it sinks better um, and, and, and it just, uh, you don't have the stretch. Now, is that true? It has the same stretch factor as the uh, mono? No, it will not stretch as much as mono. It has a lower, uh, uh, lower stretch, coat, whatever it is. It stretches much. I don't know how you say that, how you say that in fancy words, but um, I, you know, yeah, there's a, uh, okay, so I, mean, I use braid, I use fluorocarbon, I use monofilament. Paul, how many different kinds of line do you use? One. That's what I thought. Okay, so, you know, it's the same deal. Whatever you, whatever you feel more comfortable with, whatever, uh, you know, whatever best suits the way you like to fish, it's, it's going to work. Um, a lot of it is personal preference, a lot of it's gimmicks, um, and a lot of it is when it comes to my fishing and trying to do a lot of different things to try and figure things out that really don't have anything to do with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't ever. I've never put fluorocarbon on a spin caster. I think. I think that's that's. In my mind, that's you're asking for trouble. That's when you'll get. That's when you'll get. You know, you'll open the bell to make a cast, and it'll blow off the end of the spool or whatever. Yeah, you'll have a lot of problems, I think, with fluorocarbon. Like 